What is up, everyone? I feel like I'm like dressed up for a business meeting today. Hello, welcome in to the meeting. <laughs> but if you are new here, my name is Jessica. I'm glad that you stumbled in. I don't know why you're watching this video. Maybe you are pregnant. Maybe you already have a kid or you're thinking about it. Maybe you are a returning viewer of my channel and you are very kindly supporting me even if you are not even thinking about babies right now. <laughs> so thank you ahead of time for the support. But today we're gonna talk about products that I regret buying for my first baby, Genevieve, who is now three and a half. Oh my gosh. And I am now pregnant. I'm 30 weeks pregnant, actually probably around 31 weeks by the time you're seeing this uh, with my second baby, which is another girl. So we made a lot of what I'm going to call mistakes, but I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. Some things work for some people. It doesn't work for others, for different babies, for different lifestyles, for different needs and wants. And so we're gonna get into all that. So first half of the video, I'll chat about the things I regret. And then I will also share about things that we are doing differently this time. Things we're buying, maybe we're upgrading some things. Maybe we're buying things that we didn't have the first time and we really wish we did. So I'll have links to the products I do actually recommend down below and yeah, let's dive in. So before I get farther into this, I did wanna mention, I did just do a pregnancy must-haves video. I will link below if you want to watch that after this video, because in that I go through every little thing I recommend for pregnancy, especially having gone through it now twice. And I mean, down to like, if you've got morning sickness, stuff that actually worked for my nausea, that was not a fun time. <laughs> It really was not. Down to like pillows I use and specific links for all that stuff, different leggings and clothing and stuff that I highly, highly, highly recommend. That is all. I just, I'm proud of that video because I really do feel like, okay, I really now know like what I genuinely needed during pregnancy, stuff that prevented stretch marks and stuff too. So I will link that video below. <laughs> all right, first thing, and this is gonna <laughs> upset some people right off the bat. I regret buying the Halo Bassinet. I liked it. I mean, there was nothing inherently wrong with this bassinet. The thing is, it's $200 and it really doesn't do much more than what $75 and $100 bassinets do. And I think that's my biggest gripe and my biggest realization as I've been, you know, a couple years out now from using that. And we ended up reselling it because, I mean, we bought it and we were, I even remember telling Tyler, I was like, I don't really want to use this if we have another baby in a couple years. So I will share in a bit what we are going to use instead. But the big claims to fame for it are that it can swivel 360 degrees. Ask me how many times I swiveled the bassinet around. Zero. I don't recall a single time that I'm swirling that thing around for one reason or another. It was next to my bed. That was it. Like if I were getting her out of it and I was standing, I would just lift her. I didn't need to swivel it. You know what I mean? So the other feature is that the side arm, you can have it like come down so that like when you're in bed, you don't have to, I mean, you want to sit up, but you don't have to, I don't know, I guess get all the way up. I didn't really use that either. I didn't trust it. It made me nervous and you can like lock it. And I'm, I'm assuming that's still a part, a feature they have, but either way, I didn't love that feature in the end. So it really just didn't do much more than what any other bassinet does. So I think that's my biggest gripe with it. We are <laughs> gonna be spending more on a bassinet. And like I said, I'll tell you what we're using in a bit, but I'll explain why. Okay, another regret was buying way too many of the same kind of anything, bottle, pacifier, blanket. <laughs> we wanted to be super prepared and we were nesting like crazy and I wanted to make sure I had everything. And I feel like this second time of nesting has been not the opposite. I'm still trying to collect and make sure that we have what we need, but I'm being very, very, very picky. We would buy like three or four packs of a couple different brands of bottles. And so once we finally discovered what bottle she actually liked, we had all these other ones we weren't using. And it was just such a waste of money. Bottles honestly are not cheap, I don't think. And so this time around what we're doing, we didn't save any of those bottles just cause I don't know, it's been like three and a half years. I figured we'd wanna buy new and we did, we do, we haven't bought any yet. <laughs> but we figure what we're gonna do is buy three or four different kinds, but just one of each, one of each, because that way when we get to the point where we're using bottles, we will be able to try each one, get an idea. And then once we land on one that maybe she really likes, we can buy more that time. So. That is gonna be a huge change and really helpful because we just ended up having a cabinet full of like 15, 20, 30 different bottles. I don't know if it was in the 30s. It was a lot though, you guys. <laughs> that then we're having to contend with cleaning them constantly because even though it's great to have a whole bunch and you're like, yay, I have a whole bunch of these. I won't have to do dishes as often you're still grappling with a huge amount of dishes regardless. So it just, it made us crazy. But same goes for like things like blankets and pacifiers. We had like 15 different muslin swaddle blankets. 
we use the same two over and over again. Even if she like spit up or whatever, we could wash the one if, I think three is a good amount because we were constantly doing laundry regardless. And so that didn't really save us. And then we just had all of these blankets we weren't using. It was such a waste. So one regret I have, and this would only, I think, apply to you if you think you might have more than one kid, is I wish we would have invested in a nice stroller that had the possibility to turn into a double stroller down the road. So like Mockingbird makes one, they're single to double stroller. The Up A Baby Vista is the one uh, we went with. And it's such a struggle. We really could not find the perfect one that did everything we wanted, but this one had as close to what we wanted as possible. And it was still really expensive. Oh my gosh, it was a huge investment. But again, I wish I'd made that investment four years ago. So that way all we'd be buying this time would be the like kit to add the second seat. And you know what I mean? So if that is something that's on your radar and you're maybe pregnant with your first and you're like, well, we, we probably will want more down the road, it might be worth investing in a single to double stroller. And there's a lot of options out there. All right, so a hamper that's hard to clean. We went through like three different hampers with her. And the problem with cloth-like hampers that are just one piece is that it, it's impossible to clean. It's impossible to clean. So we finally landed on one we liked that had like a metal frame and it was a cloth hamper inside, but you could take that off and wash it. But then we got annoyed because every time we washed it, it was hard to get back on. <laughs> and so this time around, I literally found one at TJ Maxx that was like six or seven bucks. It's plastic. I can wipe it out if something gets on it from soiled clothing. And it's not too big either because honestly, like I said, we were doing laundry every other day for a while anyway that it didn't matter, you know, the load was a, was plenty to wash. We didn't need a giant hamper. Okay, so this time around, I have gotten rid of any sleeper, especially for like, from like basically newborn to six month, any sleeper that has a bunch of buttons and things like that. No, absolutely not. I'm not doing that, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Zippers are your best friend, please trust. And like, I just recall so many nights the first three months, like being in bed and having Genevieve there and trying to change her diaper when I'm so tired and all I want to do is sleep and dealing with buttons. Oh my gosh. So any night she was asleep with a zipper, like sleeper, I was so happy. So zippers all the way. And then this time around, we are upgrading and getting a few magnetic ones. So the biggest, like most famous brand is Magnetic Me. They make a bunch of sleepers that are literally the whole thing's magnetic. It's so freaking cool, you guys, but they're expensive. So unless you're buying them on sale, there's another brand that Bye Bye Baby sells that's it's like E equals MC, I think is the brand, something like that. And they're like $15 each. So we bought, I think I bought one newborn and one zero to three, again, with that same mindset of, I wanna try them out because if we love them, great, we can buy more, but I don't wanna have a whole bunch of these and then for whatever reason, not like them. So. That is a game changer, I'm super excited. And kind of on that vein, one mistake we made was having way too many, what I'm gonna call cute outfits for the newborn and zero to three month, and really even three to six month size. We had way too many, and I will tell you that there were some of my favorite outfits that th that baby wore once. That baby, like she doesn't have an identity. But you know what I mean? Like, there, and then I would feel guilty, like always keeping her in a sleeper or a onesie because she was at home and that, I mean, you know what, she's constantly spitting up. Like there was no reason to be putting on cute outfits unless we were going out somewhere or maybe taking photos or whatever. But it just felt like such a waste to have all these cute clothes just sitting in there. And then I'd feel guilty when I see them and be like, well, then I'll put her in a cute outfit. But then she spit up on it like an hour later. And then I'd be like, dang it. And then, and it was just such a, a weird guilt cycle. <laughs> so this time around, we I had I had kept some of those cute outfits because of course I do want to have some. But we really, I've really only bought sleepers. <laughs> That's it. And by the way, Target sells, it's their Cloud Island brand. They have sleepers that have a, like cover the hand type thing. So like the sleeve can be normal if you want it to be, but then it also has this piece of fabric that will fold over their hands. So if they're still at that age where there's the chance they might scratch themselves when they're really, really young, you can just fold them over. You're not gonna be worried about mittens falling off. I think that's awesome. <laughs> there are a couple other brands that do that too, but that's the brand I'd heard about and bought and they're really soft too. So highly recommend those, but I think that is perfect. That's what she's gonna be in more than anything anyway. All right, this is a biggie. And when I asked my husband, what do you remember feeling like that we regretted buying for Genevieve? His two things were the Bassinest sleeper that I mentioned at the beginning and this one, and it is the Mamaru. I bought it because I had so, or actually it might've even been a gift to us, I should say, but I put it on our registry because we heard so many people 
that we knew personally that they were like, oh my gosh, my kid loved the Mamaru, blah, blah, blah. Now, all of a sudden, all I'm hearing are people saying their kid hated the Mamaru, and mine was, mine was one of them that absolutely hated it. All right, I just had to change my battery, so I think I've messed with how the framing is, but that's okay. All right, so, what, oh, Mamaru, we're still on that topic. I realized why she didn't like it. It only swings one way. It has different like sequences, but it's only going side to side. And Genevieve really liked swinging front to back. And so the different like Graco swings, I don't know the names of them, but I'm gonna link the one we're pretty sure we're gonna buy down below. They're certainly cheaper than the Mamaru. And they can go different ways. So they can do the side to side, but you can turn it and do front and back. And I think having that option is so nice because you just don't know what your baby's gonna prefer. And so I think all of those friends of mine that said, their babies loved it, they probably really did, but that's because they just preferred that side to side motion. So wanted to bring that up because we ended up borrowing a kind of Graco like swing from my sister for Genevieve and we just kicked, just kicked the Mamaru to the curb. I think I ended up giving it to my mom so she's got it for grandkids and maybe this baby will like it and she can use it over there, I don't know. Regardless, that was a huge regret because that is not a cheap <laughs> product and it was such a bummer that she really, I mean, we did not use it a lot. She did not love it. Okay, this is what I don't hear a lot of people talk about. Toy organization became a very real problem as the baby like gets older and gets toys and then people are buying them toys and you've got books for them and you need a solution for like how to store it. So what I'd originally bought was a huge mistake. It was just a very cute, but a huge, just rectangular toy box with a lid that opens. And it had like a slow close thing that was kind of nice. It broke. They contacted the company. They sent us the parts to fix it. It was fine. But the point is that having just a big box for all of the toys is awful because she ended up only playing with the toys that were on the top, which then she'd get bored with. So then I'm having to dig around and it's just little pieces everywhere. And just having a big vat of toys is, to me, incredibly stressful. And I did not know that until I tried it. But this one I found on Amazon and it is so freaking cute. And I ordered the bins you see on Amazon as well. They were separate because it doesn't come with bins. Or if it does, they were like colors I didn't like. I'm trying to remember. Regardless, I love the way this looks. And I, I just feel like having, there's still some areas where, you know, when the baby's able to crawl up to it and get some toys out, it's nice to have an open area for those kinds of toys, but then also having the bins that you can put things away too. So visually it's not super, super cluttered. There is still a little like visual toy clutter, but I don't, I don't mind that. So one regret was not buying a comfy chair for the nursery. We have this beautiful heirloom rocking chair that is a part of our family and I think that is amazing, but that kind of rocking chair is not ideal. No matter how beautiful it is, it is not ideal for middle of the night rocking or feeding a baby. It really isn't. And so I told Tyler, I said, with this second baby, I am treating myself to a nice glider that is the comfiest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> and he was like, I'm in because he has to use it too, you know? So. We did invest, we haven't gotten it, but we invested in a really nice Pottery Barn one. But our mindset was, this is a piece that when we are done having kids, whether it's with this one or not, that would be something that we could move to another room and just use as a piece of furniture, like down by our TV, down in the family room, something like that. Because it is beautiful and it's got, you know, the recline feature, which is nice too. So I'm very excited to have that. <laughs> I like ridiculously excited. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be delivered here in the next week or so, so that's good. And that's another thing, if you're wanting to order a glider from anywhere, definitely order it with enough time. Make sure you've got enough time to like actually get it delivered if that's the way you're going. Obviously there are some stores you can just get it at the store and bring it home. A couple things I'm torn about, a wipe warmer and a bottle warmer. It's kind of funny that they're both like warming things. We had and used both last time. We no longer have the two we used, but I, I'm trying to decide if I want to buy them again or not. The one we used previously was a cheaper bottle warmer, for example, and it just kind of started pooing out on us towards the end. That's why we ended up getting rid of it. Um, and I think the same with the wipe warmer, but I know a lot of people knock on both of those things as being extraneous, but I have to say like with the wipe warmers, we did use it. And I do feel like, especially when she was young, it was nice but we used it for such a short amount of time because we didn't want her to get too used to warm wipes over time, only because we knew like, well, when we're out and about, it's not gonna be a warm wipe. So the time that it was the nicest to use it was those middle of the night feeds when you're not wanting to wake her up, but I don't know that it's worth it enough to buy again. So that's kind of where I wanted to bring it up. I'm torn about, 
I understand why people like them. I mean, like I said, we used it and liked it for a short amount of time. So I don't know. And the other thing that bottle warmer, she was formula fed after the first few months. Breastfeeding did not work as well as I thought it would. Oh boy, did it not. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up formula feeding and so we were warming bottles like for a while. And so we really used the bottle warmer we had. We had one from Chico. And like I said, it was pretty good. It just pooed out on us. And so if I, out of the two, that's the one I'm most apt to buy, but I'm still not totally sure. And I don't know what brand or which one I would buy. If you have suggestions, let me know. But I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning more like 70% might not buy. <laughs> All right, so some stuff that we are gonna get this time around, whether it's like an upgrade, something new we didn't have that I wish I had for this baby. First one is an easy one. We are <laughs> going to get the, uh, well, I've already bought it, the little baby electric like nail files. So when they're really little and it's hard to cut their nails for a million reasons, it's nice to have something like that. It's super gentle. I was just trying it on my toddler and she thought it was just fun. And I've tried it on myself, like it doesn't hurt. There's different uh, little nail file heads depending on how old they are. So when they're newborns, there's one you use when they're a little older, etc. And you can use it on the whole family, which I think is cool. The one I got has its own little case. It's from the Hakka brand on Amazon and it looks really neat. So I'm excited to try that because the trauma of trying to cut a tiny baby's nails and like accidentally clipping their skin is one you don't forget quickly. <laughs> so very happy to have that. Uh, another thing I mentioned earlier, the double stroller, we got the Uppa Baby Vista V2. So we got the accessories where you've got the toddler seat and the bassinet and all those different things. So you can do different configurations. And my biggest fear with that was that Genevieve wouldn't fit. She is a little older. She doesn't really need a stroller. She's three and a half. So by the time, you know what I mean? And we knew that going in, but we also know we like to travel. And if we're walking a long time, whether it's like in Disney World or something, it's kind of nice. Like even if she's four, it's nice to have a place to put her when she's tired, you know? So this one kind of provided that for us. And we learned, because our biggest thing was when she sits in the toddler seat, she hardly fit, but we learned like it goes up. So, cause we were worried she'd be too tall, but she's not a super tall kid for her age either. So definitely worth looking into. Another version you can get that's cheaper is the Mockingbird. And we really did go back and forth for a while on that, but we ended up going with the Up at Baby Vista. Okay, car seats. We have bought the Duna car seat. I have heard way too many moms say, this is a game changer. Cause if you've ever tried, you know, the carrier you've got your car seat, that you pull out and you gotta carry around into doctor's offices and you know if you're going out to eat or wherever you're going, the grocery store, it's just knocking around, it's so big, it's so heavy, especially as the baby gets a little bit bigger. But the Duna car seat is one that it is a car seat and it has a base just like a car seat, you snap it into, all of that, but you can pull it out and then do a little jig, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet to play with it, but, and wheels pop out and it's like a little stroller, like a mini little stroller. So instead of carrying it into the doctor's office, the restaurant, etc., you can just pop the wheels down and go. And I think that is worth its weight in gold. Very excited to have that. We did have to buy the second base so that we can have one in each of our cars, but that is gonna be huge. And even little things like now Genevieve's in preschool. So like we have to walk her all the way in if I'm alone and I have her and the baby, instead of trying to carry that carrier and her and her book bag in, I can just and be able to push her in and hold Genevieve's hand as we go. Uh, another thing we loved that we, we bought another one of is the Hatch Baby uh, Sound Machine. We got the plus for this next baby just cause it sounded cooler and you could do a little bit more with it. Like you can do, use it as like an audio two-way monitor. That was pretty cool to me. The other reason we bought a new one is cause the regular one we have, the Hatch Baby Non Plus, <laughs> Minus, you know what I mean? That one, we're still using with Genevieve. Like she still will have it as a nightlight in her room. Her favorite noise at this point is, th there's like a bird noise where they're just like tweeting. She listens to that all night long, you guys, <laughs> all night. And if we don't turn on the bird noise at full volume, she will not sleep. <laughs> like, it's so bizarre that that's what she's ended up on at three and a half, but the bird noises are it for her. Anyway, but we loved it. There's so much you can do with it. You can do different lights to like tell a kid, especially once they're a little older, like, okay, when it turns green at like 8 a.m. or whatever, when it turns green, you're allowed to get up out of bed. So like even for toddlerhood, it's helpful in creating routines too. Another thing I learned about, by the way, I didn't know this, was that apparently red light is good for like not fully waking up like your baby. So if you're in the middle of the night, so when she's in here the first three or four or five months, it'll be kind of nice to have that Hatch Baby Plus in here and we can just use, I can tap it and turn on the red light 
when she's up for a feeding so that hopefully, I haven't tested it yet, but hopefully it'll be bright enough for me to be able to see what I'm doing, but it's not gonna be so bright that it fully wakes the baby up. So I think that's that's kind of a cool idea. And the fact that the Hatch Baby can do so many different colors makes it even easier to like just try that out. Oh, and I promised that I would share what uh, bassinet we're gonna use. We are renting the snoo and the snoo is more expensive than the bassinest is that what it's called halo bassinest yeah even renting it is more expensive but we kind of my thing was i told tyler i'm like we can either just get a regular bassinet and i am totally fine with that i'm not buying the halo one again like it just wasn't worth that or we can get something that actually has bells and whistles that might actually help this baby sleep and so like looking into the snoo i'm like i and again a lot of people i know personally and people i know online swear by the snoo. I hope it's not gonna be like a Mamaru situation where <laughs> we have a very different experience, but that's why we're doing it. And when we kind of were budgeting and looking at renting versus buying it, one of the arguments for buying was, even if you aren't sure if you're gonna have more kids, if you buy it, the resale value for those are so high. Because like even me, I was combing Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that thinking, okay, if someone marks down the snoo by a couple hundred, I'm gonna buy it because that's a way better deal than buying it full price. But uh, that's what I mean. So if you buy it full price and you turn around to resell it after you're done with it, you're still you're gonna get a lot of your money back. So that was one thing we've grappled with, but we just decided to rent. We just figured it's easier. It'll be here, we can return it. That way, if we end up not loving it or whatever, we can deal with that then and we don't own the thing, you know? So that is what we're doing for that. I'm excited to give that a try. I did read the book that that doctor that created this new wrote the happiest baby on the block and there's some i think pretty helpful information i don't know that i agree with everything he says but there's some helpful information in there tyler read it too though and he was like i feel like this book could have been written in like five chapters and been done he just felt like it repeated itself a lot i'm like yeah i would agree with that something new we had to buy was a double monitor is that what you call it like a two two camera monitor so for genevieve we had the eye baby monitor it's not one you hear much about, but I bought it because there were decent reviews and it, it served us well for three and a half years. It's still working and we still use it, but it only is hooked up to the phone. So there is no like handheld monitor where like if someone else is here watching her, they don't have a monitor. They would have to download the app, sign it. You know what I mean? So we decided that when we get this next one, we want to get one that has two cameras so it can be the same system for both of their rooms and that it hooks up to an app and it has a monitor that can do split screen. So we found one, I haven't bought it yet, found one that should do all of that and the reviews are kind of mixed, but I have to say every single baby monitor review I've ever read for anything, every single review is mixed. So I'm like, well, so we're gonna give it a try. I'll link the one I'm looking at below if you're curious about that. I don't know if it's any good or not. I sure hope it is because it's expensive. You can get a registry even if you're not having like a baby shower and all that. And so I did one for Bye Bye Baby because you get a 15% off like coupon to use to like buy out whatever else you want on your registry at the end. So I am definitely planning on using that on the monitor and other stuff too, but definitely on the monitor. So another thing is I bought a new breast pump. So the first time around I, Listen, it didn't go super well for me, but I did use the breast pump and I used the Spectra, but I used the pink one and I really just got the pink one because I like pink. This time around, I got the blue one because I liked the idea that the blue one could hold a charge and you can move around the house with it. That was huge to me. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to give it the old college try again, I'm going to get the blue one that so at least I can be a little more mobile. I feel like the top two ones people talk about are Spectra and Medela. I've never tried Medela. I know my sister used Medela and liked it, although I'm not sure that she ever had any issues with breastfeeding. Not that that's connected to that, but just like I had issues with supply, like so many different things. So, but I had a good experience with the Spectra. Like it had strong suck. I never had any issues with that kind of thing. So that's why I stuck with the brand, but I'm just gonna get the blue one. Another thing, we got fresh linens, like fresh crib sheets. I'm having the worst luck with my camera today. <laughs> I'm at that point where I have two batteries and neither of them are fully charged, so they keep running out and I have to keep changing them off the charger. So I'm sorry, I feel like I'm so scatterbrained in this video because I cannot focus because the battery keeps running out. So yeah, fresh linens, that is something that, you know, getting a new changing pad cover, stuff that, you know, we did use those for years and they just spit up, threw up, pooped, like all of that on these few crib sheets and things that we had that I'm like, it's time, we definitely want some fresh ones. So that was always a nice feeling. Getting those, I still am at the point where I haven't um, like washed that stuff and I'm, Again, I'm like 30 to 31 weeks pregnant right now. It's not a huge rush, but also it's kind of nice to have that done. 
but you want it to be a little bit fresher. So you're like, well, I want to wait. And <laughs> so <laughs> I'm in that limbo right now. I feel like something else I didn't have the first time around is the Haka manual breast pump thing or whatever it is basically where it catches like while you're feeding on one side it'll catch the like <laughs> i clearly don't know the terms you guys hold on this is crooked it'll catch the drip drop from the, <laughs> the other one <laughs> you know what i'm saying i i really i genuinely can't think of the term but anyway so that's kind of nice because i i just remember it just like leaking and you know that just was what it was and i would just like wipe it up but it'd be nice to like catch it because that stuff is liquid gold especially if you're someone like me that struggled with supply and all that that is exciting and it wasn't super expensive there are a million brands on amazon i bought the haka brand just because that's kind of the brand i'd heard of i don't know that it really matters but you can get one that has like a lid too so you've got a, a bit so you can lid it before you are able to take it downstairs and store it properly so i thought that was pretty cool and again not a crazy expensive investment to make to give a try so things that we bought previously that we're going to be reusing would be our crib we did have to buy a new crib mattress because the toddler bed we got for genevieve uses a crib mattress is using her crib mattress so i'm like okay so we did have to buy a new crib mattress which you know that just is what it is we also have the hatch changing pad actually our best friends are borrowing it. i need to get it back from them because i'm i'm betting they're probably done using using it for weighing anyway but that one was really nice and that was one i kind of went back and forth on whether i wanted it on my registry especially because we were struggling so much with breastfeeding and stuff early on it was nice to be able to weigh her in between just to get an, any idea of like was she getting anything you know what i mean so that we really did use it for that those first few months and it was really nice and it's you know useful for future babies so we are definitely using that this time around as well it's funny though we don't actually use that for our main changing pad that one we ended up like having downstairs and we would just like if we needed to do diaper changes down there we would but it really was more of like a scale <laughs> and then we have a way more comfortable changing pad upstairs in her room because we realized like especially when they're really young setting them on a cold hard changing pad like the hatch one or like that peanut one i see everywhere it's just not comfortable like i wouldn't like to be laid on that and so doing that you know every few hours constantly it's nice to have a comfier one so we have just one we got i'm sure at ikea or something but you can get really really comfortable like velour like soft changing pad covers that are easy to wash and that is so i had so many less tears from genevieve when we lay her down on that and change your diaper versus when we lay her down on like the hatch one so it's something to be aware of the high chair we bought we're going to reuse we have a boppy but i did buy a new like a two pack of covers for it so i feel like boppy covers were harder to find four years ago but now like random brands on amazon make them and they fit and they're really cute so we just got a two pack of different fabrics so that a when she spits up on it you can change it but b it's just nice to be able to switch it up too so i'm excited about that because I, at the time, had just bought the cheapest boppy I could find with like the cheapest cover on it. And I don't really like the cover, not that it matters, but except for I look at it like every day. <laughs> so that was an exciting thing. And another, I have both the boppy and the my breast friend. I never used the boppy for breastfeeding, I will tell you that. We used it for her when she was kind of learning to sit up just to kind of, you know, or do tummy time on. I genuinely use the my breast friend for breastfeeding every time. It was so much, it sounds like, like a negative thing, but it's so much firmer that having her on it and it was so much better you guys like so 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 much better than the boppy and i heard I'm trying to think of who i was watching but they were talking about how they felt like their baby with the boppy would kind of like slide between if you're trying to breastfeed and i i kind of remember feeling that same way but the boppy is nice for someone else feeding her so like tyler used the boppy a lot when he'd be feeding her a bottle because He's not worried. He doesn't have to hold her in a very specific way like you kind of do when you're breastfeeding. So it was nice he had something to rest his hands on. Plus, boppies are great if you've got, you know, like I've got a three and a half year old that's going to want to hold her. And so having the boppy is going to be huge to like help her hold her. So lots of uses for that. Definitely still recommend the boppy. That is everything. Another thing I did want to mention is I regret not spending more time learning about what is lovingly called the fourth trimester. I really regret not learning more about that. I ended up having postpartum depression. It was just a struggle and I know I'm not alone. <laughs> I really wish that first time around I had read more about that because and what that was like. I really just focused on reading books about the labor and the delivery and all that. And you know, I'd read little bits here and there about postpartum, but that was the thing. 
that's the thing you have to grapple with way longer than the few days you're in labor. Yes, it's important to know about labor and delivery. Absolutely. And I, I reread about all of that stuff this time around too, because there's a lot you just forget. The book I'm currently reading is called Crib Sheet and it's by Emily Oster. And she's like a super data, she's an economist. I just said that wrong, economist. I was gonna say economics person, but an economist is actually what she is. And so she's super data driven and kind of nerdy in an awesome way. And so it's all about the data of like different things like on breastfeeding and on formula feeding and on just all of those kinds of things on postpartum depression. And I feel like it's a very easy read if you're interested in it, which if you're pregnant, you probably are interested, but I would highly recommend it. I also read her Expecting Better book first and that's all about pregnancy and that is my favorite pregnancy book i've ever read <laughs> and i've read a lot of them now so again you got to be like into data but she gives like graphs and charts and shows like here's why it's okay to drink coffee and you know why some doctors say you can and why some doctors say you can't like all of that stuff it is super interesting so anyway she just goes into all that kind of data and then basically her whole lesson is take this data digest it and you decide for yourself what you wanna do with it. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's your decision to make what you're drinking while you're pregnant, how you feed your baby, whatever, you know, all of those kinds of things. So I think that's nice because she you don't feel like she's pressuring you to think one certain way. She's just like, here's the data, you make your own decisions. So definitely reading up on stuff beyond labor and delivery before you have the baby. So you really, really do have a better idea of what to expect because that is a huge regret of mine. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I'm definitely planning on doing a like nursery tour. I laughed when I saw my old nursery tour. It's no longer up, you guys. I had to privatize it. I rewatched it and was cringing. I'm like, I didn't organize anything. I just like had stuff shoved in drawers. I don't know what I was thinking. And now I'm like way more into organization than I was. So I genuinely have some organization to this nursery this time around and I'm excited to film that for you guys and share that with you in the next, really in the next month or so, once it's actually all together and done, or at least done enough, you know. But I also want to do our like number one must have baby items, not just big things. I feel like we talked a lot of, about a lot of big things in this video, but also like specific, smaller, like everyday things you use and what has worked for us. So that I will probably not do until after we have the baby just cause I wanna have that second time around of trying some things, we'll see. But lots of stuff like that coming up. I'm also planning on sharing what I'm packing in my hospital bag here very, very soon. <laughs> I think I have everything I need. I just need to like actually get it together, kind of check my list I've made. I've just been watching tons of YouTube videos and making my own list, adding, removing, changing. So I'll definitely have that video up here in the next month or so as well. So I hope that you'll subscribe and stay tuned for that. Got lots of vlogs coming, just sharing what's going on in our lives and our house and projects we're working on too. Also, I did do a pregnancy must-haves video. It is exhaustive, not exhausting, but it, I mean, I really go through every little thing that I really do feel like has made a difference when it comes to like, if you're experiencing first uh, trimester, like morning sickness stuff that actually worked for me after trying like 10 different things, things like that, but also books I've read and clothing that I love, like specific leggings that I think are the best, etc. So definitely check that video out next. I will link it down below and I'll put it up in the eye right up there. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.